I'm just getting tea prepared as you do. But uh, I just thought, you know, um, for this tissue culture thing, um, in all the books they talk about the bog soils and swamp soils being almost sterile. And I'm thinking, you know, I had a go with some uh, what was it? plant tissue culture a couple of years ago. And for a first go, it wasn't too bad, you know, very slight contamination sort of thing. And I've got a few others. Uh, you know, various things. And this was before I even got to uh, the end of my journey sort of thing. And I'm thinking, oh, that's not too bad. And I'm thinking, well, why don't I go back now and have another go, you know? I know the levels of, um, you know, bottom lands where I like, can stick in a jar uh, so it doesn't burn the roots off your plants sort of thing. I mean, if, if the natural world is in a soil where, you know, you, it's almost sterile, so you only have to, like, close the gap, maybe it's almost sterile out in the world because, as I said, it's all random and, you know, to a certain extent. And, you know, it's no area is actually, in quotes, neat or at its uh, optimum level sort of thing. Whereas in a jar, you know, It can be working in there 24, 7, 365 days of a year sort of thing, you know? So the bug has got, you know, any bugs or, you know, it's mainly fungi in, in these sort of soils they talk about in the books. Uh, mainly, and quite a lot of the groups they talk about are all the good, good, the, the good bugs, basically. So, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, if it's that far over, and they're basically, to some extent, the good bugs, you know, closing the gaps shouldn't be that hard, actually, really. You know, it's like a counterintuitive logic in a way, you know. <laughs> Most of your work is already done, you know. You don't have to worry about killing off all these organisms. They're not there. It's just, just this little tiny group over here. And they're mostly good bugs, according to the book. So, you know, you know things like penicillium or something like, you know, you get all the antibiotics. So, you know, if they're producing antibiotics, the antibiotics, Biotics that this little group of here are producing uh, will help maintain the killing off or the uh, exclusion of all these organisms out here, sort of thing. So, really, you, you only have to do this amount of work to close the gap. And I'm thinking, well, you, you're sitting in a jar, you know, and that's all you have to do. And I think, well, you, you, you might come up with a new form of tissue culture that way, where you know, you just so just I can't get the sound. <laughs> the hand, the sound of one hand clapping. Yeah, when I mean, you just whack it in the jar and um, set it and forget sort of thing. You know, you, you take a cutting, and you just pop it in the jar, put the lid on, and f and that's it. That's all the work you have to do. I mean, wouldn't that be brilliant if we could come up with a new form of tissue culture? And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to have another bloody go. You know. You don't, you don't want to be this close and stop. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to take my bottom lands rhodium formulation. I'm going to go back to the jars, and uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the back to the jars. And later on this week, I'm going to have another fucking go. Because if you're that close, would you stop? I mean, if you're that close to getting total sterility in the jar and having a formulation that actually grows the plant, you know. <laughs> You'd be insane not to have another go. Anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. But it's a bit like this thing here I was thinking about. You know? This bike here, I got this book out the other day for someone wanted an Easter egg, this thing. Someone's shown that they've got a a new Hamiltonia is, is doing the rounds. I think Greg Burke has also told, talked about, there might actually be, I know that when Greg Burke um, 
sent me uh, Hamiltonii, oh geez, it must be like over a decade ago now. I haven't even put the, fo uh, the foot footage up online, I don't think. I don't think I've even transferred it. I may even have some more in the lockup as well. But when he sent me uh, one from the Eastern States, instantly I knew it was different to the, the local Adelaide form that was doing the rounds. But uh, th this um, bloke here, Adrian Slack, who wrote the original Bible on CPs, you know, don't be conned by um, the Savage Garden being the, the CP Bible. That's this was and is the original CP Bible sort of thing. You know, the Adrian Slack's card was plants void, you know, the Slack one as it's referred to because he came out with the second book. It seems strange because in this book he was sort of suggesting you get into uh, leaf mold and then in the second book he like shies away from it which was a bit, was a bit strange. Um, it was almost like he sold out or something because it, at the time the second book came out he supposedly had a stroke. Though if you go into the, the CPNs in the late 90s or something, if you actually managed to get hold of them, we had terrible trouble getting those things from my kind of plants or so. All sorts of funny things started happening. Yeah. Well, you always had to kill someone to get a copy sometimes. So, uh, yeah. Um, the photographs in that, he looks like he's, he's healthy and fitter than he was when he was 20 years younger. And I'm thinking, my God, you know, if they got him on some good, <laughs> if the ship that they got him on is that good, I want to know about it sort of thing. I mean, it's, it's almost like Stephen Hawking in a way. I mean, for someone with a terminal illness, he's taking a hell of a long time about dying. <laughs> I mean, what do they come to him and made him a special deal? If you're willing to sit in a wheelchair for 40 years, you know, as far as we know, he sits in the wheelchair for 24 seven, but has anyone, See, seen him and filmed him? <laughs> Is it a bit like uh, Christopher walking, you know, <laughs> doing that, that, that film clip, you know, when, when the cameras aren't looking, he gets out of the wheelchair and does the normal thing, and then it's back in the wheelchair for the, the public. I, as I said, it's a bit funny that uh, everyone else who, who gets supposedly his illness, it, was it a misdiagnosis? Uh, it, they got his terminal illness wrong. Well, I'm sure it's not actually a terminal illness. You're going to live for another 40 years, <laughs> or is it? The, if you want all these book deals, these film deals, um, the price is you've got to sit in, in a wheelchair for 40 years. Uh, well, do you accept? <laughs> I don't know, but it just it just seems a bit to my my funny way of thinking it just seems a bit strange this bloke's living a bit long and you know it's a bit like this bloke here you know when you look at the photographs this this bloke now in the in the late 90s when the photographs came out he looked healthier than he did like 20 years before and i think jesus i was on some pretty good shit i want to know about that i mean I mean, can you imagine a healthy person being on the good shit, you know, you, oh, oh, geez, you're going to live almost, you know, at least 120, 140, I would, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Uh, anyway, I've got into a funny mood, so I think this clip's getting a bit long, but uh, I, you, you, it's a bit like the liverworts, you know? You know, the liverworts don't, you, know, so you get to a point where, you know, there's something out there in the real world, you know that there's no way that the liverwort can lie to you, and the liverwort is staring you in the face, you know. But not being from a European centric, uh, you know, uh, you know, background, uh, you know, directly sort of thing, you know, from these places have all these calcium rich areas, you don't twig. And people have, have abused that lack of knowledge sort of thing over the time. So you have all these pots. You see bee pots festoon with the with the with liverworts, and the liverworts are screaming. They either are using calcium, or they're using something like calcium, and uh, yeah, it's just sort of as I said, it's almost like this. You're being told one story, and then the photographs come out, and they oh, almost like telling you another, uh, like you're being lied to in a way. It's all like you know. Well, we're not fertile. We, we we don't use fertilizer, and they said, "Well, what are these plants living on nothing? You know, what, what are they just are they just breathing in the air if, and, and <laughs> growing? Are they? Well, you know, I think we're learning a bit more about these plants. The the, the more 
ordinary than you think they are and um, yeah they were um, yeah I think actually for the last oh, you could almost say 40 years I think we've been either misled or been lied to to a certain extent and you know I don't know how this is going to pan out you know some of these commercial places you get there you know when the public gets wind of what's been going on over the years I you know I feel sorry for some of these places they could get their old greenhouse range either they get the whole plant sprayed with glyphosate or they get their greenhouses burnt to the ground or something you know because basically they've just been taking the, pu the public's money for, for jam sort of thing you know thank you very much there's no way the plant you've just bought is ever going to grow or it'll be successful to your, your your idea or your standards of what you expect you know you expect to take a buy a plant take it home you know pot it up and, and half the, the the problem is when when you pot it up I mean, if they're if they're fertilizing in a high rich nutrient environment and you transfer it to ordinary peat and sand that you've been taught to do rather than wild soil that all the old buggers used to use immediately you've got a conflict you know if they're using a mycorrhizae that's you know classically or anciently saprophytic once you, get, you know, go from high nutrient low nutrient, and it gets hungry and of course the first thing it goes, it's going to do is go and chew the roots off your plants and not many plants can survive without roots you know not many basic ordinary plants can survive there are some things like air plants and things like that but you know even some of these epiphytic orchids have, have so-called pseudo roots sitting in the trees you know but not many plants can physically survive without any sort of uh, rootage in, in, in quotes. But uh, uh, I, I think we're going, we're going to be going into some really strange and funny times over the next few years. Once the real truth comes out about carnivorous plants and uh, I can see a lot of people just ducking for cover because they just won't be able to, uh, you know, as they say, sunlight is the best sterilant. I don't, I don't think some of these people are going to be able to handle the Australian intensity of sunlight when it really starts to shine on them you know some of the outlandish things I mean back in the old days I've even heard stories of people taking uh, single Ceracenia leaves single leaves putting them together in a bundle of sphagnum moss and selling it as a plant until I think I think that's where the, the glyce phosphate story comes from once the public found out that the, the plants this person was selling was just individual leaves uh, I think his whole, uh, as far as the story or the anecdotal story was uh, all these plants were sprayed with glyphosate and he slowly watched them die over the next three weeks and basically that the public put him out of business basically uh, they weren't having that I mean especially the Australian public we don't we don't like things like that you know we're, we're the land of the fair go we don't mind a fair go we don't mind, you know, a fair trade for our, you know, fair day's whack of money sort of thing. But you con us, you con us, and I think we have been, I think, over the years, we have been conned in various aspects of CPs. You know, this low nutrient, you know, eating the insects for the nitrogen thing, you know. Okay, it was probably partly wrong in the first place, but then it was, that poor, bad theory was abused by some of the commercial places they started doing one thing then started promulgating, promulgating this sort of bad or false you know, slightly wrong theory and started making money out of doing that you know a lot of money you know and then a, you know, plants going out the door with no possible chance of uh, survival and and then and the prices slowly creeping up when they're doing supposed to be doing tissue culture when tissue culture the idea behind tissue culture is mass propagation to get the price down and the you know and the availability up so it, it's not like they will be being any they'll be good samaritans you know oh we're, do, we're, we're doing tissue culture we want to keep the price down to three dollars a plant no it's the price has crept up from three dollars thank you very much you know but have you noticed always the the price of cephalotis and the price of Venus flytraps. There's some sort of parity, uh, um, not parity. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, a, a ratio between flytraps and cephalos. And have you noticed that the f 
Cephalodus, you know, you see fly traps sold a lot in shops, but you hardly ever see a Cephalodus sold in a shop, but they're e they are easily available from commercial places. Is that something to do with the law? And do you have to have a special permit to sell Cephalodus at a shopping centre or something? I don't know, but it just seems strange that Cephalodus and Venus flytraps are tissue cultured. How come you don't also see Cephalodus with flytraps on a regular basis at shops? Oh, I, I can't. I don't think I, I've ever seen a Cephalodus and a flytrap at a normal shopping centre sort of place, you know? You know, a hardware store sort of place. Anyway, it's a bit of a ramble, but you know, I got a bit sidetracked, but you know, there's a lot of issues at stake and in play at the moment, but if we can crack this, you know, new form of tissue culture, you know, with the good shit, you know, so you just take a cutting and pop it in and, and that's it, you, that's, that's your work, that's your day, that's your day, finished, you know. Uh, and then you just sit back and let it and let the, the leaf or anything start sprouting shoots and three to twenty plants of an individual piece of leaf that you just drop in a jar. Isn't that the dream? Isn't that where we want to go? Isn't that, isn't that the place we want to be? Anyway, I'm going to try it for you fellas because I thought, well, you know, if you're that close, why stop? Okay, over and out. <laughs>